Hello. Not here. here. Well, welcome back to Path of Exile. We are getting to the end of Act 2. We're entering the Vile Ruins. Uh, a level 61 area. I'm 65 currently. So, over leveling it a little bit. Which is why I suspect it's probably going to be uh, more a matter of finding the exit quickly than having to struggle to defeat all the mobs here. This is actually not bad, five sockets. Still have to link it of course, but having five sockets on an, uh, on an armor to begin with is not bad. And we got all four of our fancy charges up and running. Doing decent damage still. Oi, beastie. Doomed the hibernators. I do like the 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 naming that the the devs have put up for some of these things. Like the doomed hibernators. No bears, they just wanted to go here for some, some hibernating sleep and well, they kind of got revived and are doing now someone else's bidding. Sure, the bears did not have that in mind when they went in here for sleep. So there's quite a bunch of bears. More than you would expect it to be. I, I think. The whole stereotype is that there's going to be one bear per cave, right? Otherwise they're just going to be chasing each other out. It's my cave. No, it's my cave. No, it's my cave. Fight about it? Sure. Something along those lines. So that one was standing on his hind leg for quite a bit, being, well, frozen. Titlask. So, how lucky are we going to be with the level layout this time? A bunch of blues and a yellow. Fancy is damaged. Which is not a bad state to be in. In my case, I have to kill things to get fancied. And then it's only a 25% chance per kill. So, keeping those charges up is actually not the easiest task in the world. Also, now that I'm focusing on frenzy charges, I probably should grab frenetic over here to increase the, the duration by up to 36% and get another charge. Something I overlooked in my initial design. It is a, a three point, but it will make the frenzy damage more stable. As, but as I said, it's, it's chance based to obtain them. So if you have a 36% more time to get them, then it's going to be 13.6 uh, seconds up rather than 10 seconds. Um, which is good. So those gavels are highlighted in green. Because, well, basically after level uh, 60, you know, you slowly get into the, into the mapping uh, part of the game. And those hammers, oh, there's a door, I haven't opened. Um, gavels, stone hammers, and then all things that look like that. They, if you uh, put them up to 20% quality and you put them, you sell them t uh, together with a map, then you get a map chisel in return. It's the, the chisel recipe. So you do want to find a couple of those uh, hammers every once in a while. I already have some in stock, so I don't actually uh, chase after them as, as desperately as I need. But it's it's nice to have them highlighted for when you are running maps, so you can always just keep your uh, your your stock up. Most of the time in my my maps uh, stash tab, I just have like one or two rows next to each other with just uh, hammers that I can use for that purpose. 
And that way you always have hammers. And if a guy got more than that, then I don't need. So these these are the chisels that you will end up making. Which add quality to maps and oh that's a good thing. Because you want high quality maps. Yeah, 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 see? The moment they, they start charging in they lose frostbolt and they just start doing less damage. So what's a lottie? Ah, that's uh, the staff. Hybrids, probably don't really care as much about hybrids as... Shit, I don't know. There's probably builds that, that can use hybrids uh, very well. But in my case, just... just no. Hybrid flasks, I, I never really have a use for them. Maybe as a, an alternate use for mana flasks might be something, but oftentimes you, you pay for the flexibility with less charges or less maximum charges or you use more charges, therefore you're better off just using a proper mana flask instead. Alchemy, chromatic, I'm not sure that's just a uh, 60 dagger. So far, we're doing a near full clear. Oh. Enemies are slowed. I don't like to be slowed. Then again, I just teleport around, so why would I really care about that? And we have arrived at our destination, and the world turned purple. Well, that's good. This shadow is starting to feel a little inadequate. So, oh, if you like sunlight, you know, you might disagree with the whole purple world thing. So, the other day I got a a tip from someone who's playing a variation of this build and they're using greater multiple projectiles with frostbolt and you, know, you might remember like a dozen or two episodes ago i played around with lesser multiple projectiles back when i still had frostbolt in a tree link uh, that takes to go to them empty your pockets so I think in between episodes I'm gonna exper experiment a little bit with greater multiple projectiles just to see how it uh, how it works in practice. Let's see, this one we can sort, uh, this one we sort, and the other ones we can sell. Well, currently overflowing with relevant items. Going. So with greater multiple projectiles, you surrender damage against individual foes, but you can create a wall of moving projectiles so you add some safety in that regard since it's just a wall of frost moving towards the enemies and I'm very curious to see how it's going to impact just the effective damage uh, especially you know, since against bosses as you see it already takes quite a bunch of frost bolts to actually kill them okay this one actually does resist uh, cold, but just need a moment to you know, white mobs you can just push over. Um, the tougher mobs, they often take a lot of damage, of a, a lot of attacks to actually kill. So that, that's going to be an interesting thing to, to just double check. Oh, my my initial assumption about, for example, uh, ice bite turned out to be. Actually, it turned out to be much more useful than I thought because it uh, gives you frenzy charges, and frenzy is quite a damage multiplier, especially once you got four or five of those charges up. Yeah, 
actually. Doing 5k damage now. That's just due to the due to the frenzy charges. Another yellow here. Well, the good thing is that it is tricky for me to kill my opponents sometimes just to do enough damage but in reverse i am often in a very safe situation um, now you might remember a certain incident with a certain spider queen that that was a bit less uh, a bit less promising so to say it was actually rather scary because she did, did do a ton of damage but even there the fact that I got such a huge buffer in terms of, of life and energy shield is probably what kept me alive. And the fact that she just does massive chaos damage really doesn't help. And I think the, the, the arsonist's possession there probably converts a lot of damage to fire or adds extra fire damage. So I just got attacked on, on two, fl two fronts, chaos damage against my, uh, my actual life with the fire on top also damaging my energy shield. So I had to tank with two things rather than being able to mostly uh, focus on my, my life. But, but mobs that, that do a lot of chaos damage are... They are just in general pretty nasty to deal with, especially if you're using if you have an energy shield built. Suddenly, the you know, the tankiness that you are relying on is uh, um, well, it it it's gets pushed into a completely different direction. And there we have uh, the caverns. Uh, from the looks of it, we'll be able to deal with the Val Oversoul today. Let's see if we encounter the unique uh, drop bear down here. Oop. My mouse just jumped away. And that's just a dead end. So this is one of the types of monsters that just got moved around a little bit or uh, also added to this area. And I think more monster types were added and moved to other places just to, to spice up the variety. The, no, the, the skeletal bears in, in the previous area are an example as well, for example. Sentinel jacket, five sockets, that's even better than the, the bone armor we found previously. Oh, and uh, the whole thing with, with upgrades, it's gonna repeat a couple more times until we get into uh, the, the even higher level areas. So I think most classes and most item types have their uh, top tier items after level 65 some between 65 and 70 72 i think depends a bit on the on the slot and a bit depends on the on the armor since it's all all different there there i don't think there's any consistency to the to the levels then again i, I still have to uh just make the time to you know, sit down for an hour or two with the, the wiki on, on one screen and my loot filter on the other and just painstakingly craft all the different items in so I will actually know all the items and only highlight the ones that are the absolute best for each class. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Or in case of things like astral plates, which ones provide a very interesting trade-off.
And we have arrived at one stage of our destination. Let's uh, empty our pockets quickly. And then move on. Hello. Uh, boots, I'm not uh, full on yet. So, I have that one. And just sort of the other things. Also, slightly drowning in the scrolls. And we move onwards to the caverns. To deal with the Waal over Sol. No frostbolt with a vortex. It's still a very nice combination of skills. Being able to shoot an AoE through a doorway, if the doorway actually cooperates, so to say, is pretty nice. Especially you now, if you miss with the initial projectile, you can still turn it into a hit by just exploding it. And we have a staircase here. Very excellent. Okay, we start in the bottom. So we move to the top. So once we got our damage scaling done with the, the skill points and we start to move into the into the critical hits part of the build then of course I'm gonna drop control destruction which is gonna well, make me suffer in the short term in terms of uh, roll damage the fact that my crits will get scaled afterwards should make up for it But that's also one of the reasons why for now I'm not strongly focusing on crits. Because now if you go crit, you it, it really benefits from focusing on it. It's, it's more an, an all or nothing thing and just adding a little bit of crits. You know, given the fact that things like controlled destruction exist, it's... Yeah, you, you give up too much by only half-heartedly focusing on crits. Because that means that no, with control destruction you negate the little bit of investment you do. Or you have to choose no controlled destruction but then you don't really have a strong counter proposal for your build, so I say. So one of the nice things is that the, the, well, like what you would expect with a pyramid, the levels get smaller the further uh, you rise to the top. So now it's actually quite a walk all the way to the, to the top end of the map here. But the next level is going to be slightly smaller. And then the next one should be smaller still. A situation like here. Now I, I missed the, I missed hitting the guy, so I just killed that. Oh, and that was a, uh, a coral ring that was actually 60 plus. It's the first jewelry item I found since I added the the loot filter. That's actually there and level 60. Uh, you'll find that, that the, ju the jewelry part and the gloss for some reason are they, they, they are always the tricky bits. Or maybe that's just my personal experience and someone else uh, has their own uh, other item that, that's just nearly impossible to find.
Well, you do notice that the golem attracts a lot of the attention here. If you are not playing with a golem, you will be tanking a lot more damage. Well, if you're not playing with a stone golem, then you will be tanking a lot more damage yourself. Just uh, something to keep in mind if you want to not take a golem or take another golem. You will be, uh, well, basically forced to uh, move around a bit more and actually pay attention to what's happening. Rather than well, having a, a bit more straightforward gameplay but just focusing on mobs and not so much on positioning. Assassin boats, level 63. Energy shield item, that's uh, pretty high end. So for now I'm just highlighting all the all the potential items. I might eventually just wanna only highlight the ones that actually have the four sockets on them. Because well that's funny. So much attention you wanna spend on worthless base items. On the other hand, it doesn't really cost all that much to uh, run force, uh, roll four sockets onto uh, onto an item. You got the Verici workbench upgraded. You can uh, oh, get it working pretty quickly. Also, I think I am one tunnel too far. This is where I have to go, and that is the pyramid apex. Okay, let's do this. So, my resistances are capped. I got 76 lightning, 80 cold, and 75 fire. And okay, I'll speak negative, it's kind of a default. Probably when I redo my uh, entire gear once I start running maps, I want to get my chaos positive. And the fact that I'm just over resisting quite a bit means I do have the flexibility to, uh, to do that. Okay, bomb it, curse it, shoot it. And yikes. So this guy actually hurts quite a bit. And it's good that my golem is tanking. Trying to keep it cursed does help but it's not enough to turn the resistances negative apparently well keep in mind I am penetrating a lot of resistances as well that you don't actually see also my golem got uh, disappeared here also maybe we should summon our army And obviously that's the moment when it decides to disappear. But 32 skeletons is uh, quite a force to be reckoned with. And we got them. So this did turn into an interesting fight. He did a lot more damage than I was uh, anticipating. But we made it through. That's in the end the, the important bit. Done this as much as the next assassin, but that was overdoing it. <laughs> so let's uh, uh empty our pockets. So good to be back in the city. And then walk over to, to start. So everything it goes into the sorting bucket as always. And unlock the town. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Well, no, the the fight did highlight that it is useful to get even more damage because, well, it took minutes rather than seconds, right? So this clear build is clearly not going fast enough. And yes, there was a little bit of sarcasm there, but obviously 
Now, more damage means faster clearing, which means op opponents have less time to actually hit you, which means more safety. A safety is good. Slowly, most of the items that drop are now becoming the level 60 plus base items. So, eventually, I just might want to take out of the purple highlighting and I'll only show relevant items. That <laughs> might be a better deal. So, to not put attention on them since, well, they're not actually that attention worthy unless you are specifically looking for a specific item to, to craft or maybe to chance into. Uh, potentially into you and into a unique. Uh, let's see. Oh. Soul onions. And there are still a couple more. Yep. Well, let's uh, put some skeletons against you. Oh, there's a yellow in there. Uh, in all the chaos here, it's a bit hard to see what the heck's going on, but we will deal with it just fine. And I am noticing that I've been upgrading my Frostbolt uh, and my Vortex more than my capacity to actually regenerate mana per second. So eventually I might actually want to spend some points to grab the Deep Thoughts again. But you get some mana regen from it, you get 28% uh, increased maximum mana. So that, that, that actually stacks pretty well with all the regen I've already got. So then a bigger pool means more regen, which no, it, it amplifies each other in a sort of geometric way. And there you have it, we have arrived at Merciless City of Sarn. So, yeah, Act 2 took 3 episodes. Act 3 is usually a bit longer. It, that, that, that's the, the funny bit, you know, the further you get, the, the longer it takes. But for now, I'm just gonna thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.